depopulation should be the highest priority of foreign policy towards the third world. Henry Kissinger, 1974. Uh, there's a need for a new world order, but it has different characteristics in different parts of, of the world. Now, none of this may succeed this time, but this to me is sort of the outline by which someday in the next few years, a solution will emerge. Where does this mindset come from? Why do the elites kill the largest masses of people when no one is resisting them, when they've already attained total control? What ideology drives the elite psychopath? Since Plato's time 2400 years ago, state planners have openly proclaimed their desire to control every detail of the commoner's life. From breeding programs to mass extermination of undesirables, the dark dream has continued on for millennia. The scientific rationale for tyranny has always been attractive to elites because it creates a convenient excuse for treating their fellow man as lower than animals. Robert Thomas Malthus, famous for saying that a mass food collapse would be helpful because it would wipe out the poor. His fictional scenario would later be called a Malthusian catastrophe. Malthus is important because his ideas led to the rise of a new scientific field that would dominate the course of human history for the next 200 plus years. Charles Darwin, an admirer of the Malthusian catastrophe model, developed the theory of evolution, its chief tenet being the survival of the fittest. With the help of T.H. Huxley, known as Darwin's bulldog for his strong support of Darwin's theories, Darwin's theories were pushed into wide acceptance among key scientific circles throughout England and then the world. Darwin's cousin, Francis Galton, credited as the father of eugenics, saw an opportunity to advance mankind by taking the reins of Darwin's evolution theory and applied social principles to develop social Darwinism. The families, Darwin, Galton, Huxley, and Wedgwood were so obsessed with their new social design theory that they pledged their families would only breed with each other. They falsely predicted that within only a few generations, they would produce supermen. The emerging pseudoscience was only codifying the practice of inbreeding, already popular within elites for millennia. The Four Families experiment was a disaster. Within only two generations of inbreeding, close to 90% of their offspring either died at birth or were seriously mentally or physically handicapped. The moneyed class of the planet, and particularly the royal families of the world, who were already obsessed with breeding and filled with a predatory disdain for the underclass, seized on the new science and began aggressively enforcing its aims worldwide. Biometrics appears to be a new science, but it was actually developed by Galton back in the 1870s as a way to track racial traits and genetic histories, and as a way to decide who would be licensed to breed. In 1904, the Cold Springs Harbor Research Facility was started in the United States by eugenicist Charles Davenport with the funding of prominent robber barons Carnegie, Rockefeller, and Harriman. In 1907, the first sterilization laws were passed in the United States. Citizens with mild deformities or low test scores on their report cards were arrested and forcibly sterilized. You're 17, aren't you, Alice? Yes, but what have you done to my folks? Well, we're trying to help them, Alice, and you too. They were taken to the hospital this afternoon. Hospital? Wasn't well, none of them sick this morning. We thought it necessary to present your family's case to the State Medical Commission. Not to an examination, they decided there was but one important action to take. To have your entire family sterilized. Why, what's that? I don't know what you're talking about. Now, in this state, we have a law which provides for such people to have an operation so there won't be any more children. I see. Now, we've placed your brothers in institutions where they'll be properly cared for. 
But you can go back to your job soon. I'll arrange to have it held open for you. But I'm keeping my job. I'm not going anywhere. Now, you're going to the hospital too, Alice. And you mean they're going to stop me from having children ever? Exactly. I'm all right, I tell you. I won't go to any hospital. We don't want any trouble with you, young woman. If you refuse to go, the officer here will take you by force. In 1910, the U.S. Eugenics Record Office was set up. By then, the British had created the first network of social workers, expressly to serve as spies and enforcers of the eugenics race cult that was rapidly taking control of Western society. The social workers would decide who would have their children taken away, who would be sterilized, and in some cases, who would be quietly murdered. In 1911, the Rockefeller family exports eugenics to Germany by bankrolling the Kaiser Wilhelm Institute, which later would form a central pillar in the Third Reich. At the 1912 International Eugenics Conference in London, eugenics becomes an international craze and gains superstar status. The futurist and best-selling sci-fi author H.G. Wells had studied biology under top eugenicist and was spreading the new faith worldwide. In 1916, H.G. Wells' lover, Margaret Sanger, starts her promotion of eugenics in the United States. In 1923, Sanger receives massive funding from the Rockefeller family. Sanger wrote to fellow eugenicist Clarence J. Gamble that black leaders would need to be recruited to act as front men in sterilization programs directed against black communities. In 1924, Hitler pins Mein Kampf or My Struggle and credits U.S. eugenicist as his inspiration. Hitler even wrote a fan letter to American eugenicist and conservationist Madison Grant, calling his race-based book, The Passing of the Great Race, his Bible. Hitler developed the plan for mass extermination of the Jews and what he called other sub-races, as well as the handicapped from Grant. By 1927, eugenics hit the mainstream. The so-called science was aggressively pushed through contests at schools, churches, and at state fairs. Churches competed in contests with big cash prizes to see who could best implement eugenics into their sermons. Major denominations then tell Americans that Jesus is for eugenics. That same year in the United States, more than 25 states passed four sterilization laws, and the Supreme Court ruled in favor of brutal sterilization policies. When Hitler came to power in 1933, one of his first acts was to pass national eugenics laws modeled after laws in the United States. The 1934 film, Tomorrow's Children, brought the eugenics agenda to the silver screen in the United States. In the case of Miss Mason, I can see no reason for the operation that's been recommended. The girl is perfectly normal. She's hardworking and has a good reputation. Do you know anything about her family background? Oh, yes, Your Honor, I do. There are several other children, aren't there? Yes. What is their condition? One is a cripple, two others might be classed as feeble-minded. Isn't the oldest son in jail? Oh, yes, I believe so. And knowing all that, you still contend that this girl should be allowed to bring more people like that into the world? She's sound, Your Honor. She's not anything like the rest. Surely she should be given a chance to work out her own salvation. I can't agree with you, Doctor. Suppose she is normal. The chances are that her children will inherit the family taint. Isn't that possible? But, Your Honor, I... I'm sorry, Doctor. Three generations of unfit are enough. Petition not allowed. By 1936, Germany had become the world leader in eugenics for taking effective actions to sterilize and euthanize hundreds of thousands of victims. The big three of American eugenics, Davenport, Laughlin, and Goethe, were dispatched by the Rockefellers to Germany, where they advised the Nazis on the fine-tuning of their extermination system. With the strong support of the U.S. and England, Germany had gone over the edge and tens of millions would pay with their lives. In 